Okay, so my first uh, trip out to do a solo camp out on my bike didn't exactly go as planned. Um, I stopped to adjust the luggage on my bike and uh, my GoPro came off. Luckily it came off right there so I didn't lose my GoPro. But I don't have any footage of me riding out to Ocotillo Wells. So um, I got here. And I wanted to camp really far away from anybody, and I've accomplished that task. Um, had some issues with my luggage not staying put, and uh, uh, that held me up, made me a little bit later than planned. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just me not setting things up properly, so I'm just going to have to do a better job when I pack up to leave. Um, unfortunately, it put me out here later than planned. I had... Uh, was going to go back out and get firewood um, from somewhere, just scavenge it up from other people's camps or whatever I could find. But I got here so late and I'm really beat. <laughs> it's about a hundred mile ride from my house out to uh, Akatia Wells. And uh, it wasn't a bad ride, but there was a lot of traffic. This is Halloween weekend and uh, a lot of slow cars and it was just, uh, it took longer, it, it, it took two and a half hours to get out here. And usually in my truck with a 32 foot trailer, I can get out here in less than two. So I really expected to be out here in an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, but I should have known better. <laughs> if, uh, if the worst thing that happens is that uh, I didn't get the footage on my GoPro that I wanted and I don't get to have the fire that I wanted, but uh, everything else goes well, then uh, I, I would consider this trip a success. I, I've never camped out on the bike before, and uh, so we'll see how it goes. I've got some uh, meals to cook up, and uh, um, that's pretty much it. You know, I'll uh, check back later on when I'm cooking, and uh, you can see some more of that. And sorry, I'm not an editing genius, so yes, you'll get to see me get up and turn off the camera. <laughs> Alright, well, looks like we're going to have some mountain house chicken and dumplings. I can do this without getting burned severely. Ooh, it's hot. And I got my spoon over here. that up. Got a, one of those titanium spoons. I don't know why weight seemed to be a concern. But a lot of stuff the backpackers you use, we can use. So it says to uh, stir this up a couple times and wait about 10 minutes. I'm pretty hungry, so <laughs> it might be a long time. I am finding a little bit of wood around here, so I'm gonna go see if I can uh, scrounge up some more while this is uh, cooking or rehydrating, whatever it does, and I'll get back to you. Maybe I can have a fire after all. Well. Looks like I got my fire that I wanted. I had to scrounge a little bit of wood. It was around here. Um, I picked this spot. I don't know how much of this you can actually see. Um, it's on the very edge of the park, at least the off-road park, because it's pretty much surrounded by Anza Borrego Desert State Park, and you can't have fires over there on the ground. And I really wanted a fire, so this was the best option I could come up with. Um, it's not cold. It's nice out. It's probably 70, but it's supposed to get down to 55 tonight. I didn't put the cover on the tent. I think it'll be fine. 
um, it's just not not there's not much moisture in the air out here so I think it'll be all right um, had my mountain house chicken and dumpling it was actually pretty good uh, a lot of sodium though and uh, I didn't pack a whole lot of water I brought three liters but like I didn't get here till 4.30, 445 so I'm packing up in the morning and heading home. So the only thing I need more water for is a few more drinks and um, it's going to make some oatmeal in the morning but uh, I also have some breakfast bars if I end up using up all my water. Plus on the way out I can stop and get more water. Um, I'm probably, I don't know, eight miles from the ranger station maybe 10 at the most I don't even think that far so it's really not that big of a deal to uh, go back out and get some water if I need it but so far I like this spot it's nice it's far away from everybody I can see lights way off in the distance but that's pretty much it um, no noise just quiet just what I wanted so it's uh it's not bad at all so hopefully you're hearing all this but um we'll see um but definitely uh we'll get colder later tonight so it'll be nice to have Maybe some wood left over for that and uh, in the morning do something with it. We'll see. It's only 7 o'clock. I'm already ready for bed. But if I go to bed this early, I'll be up at 4. <laughs> so I think I'm going to hang out here by the fire for a while and just enjoy the peace and quiet and uh, yeah it's just really nice out here no one's around like I said I'm on the I guess it's the very north end of the park and uh, uh, right on the border so there is a trail here but I don't think too many people use it there's not much of a reason to come down here it doesn't uh, doesn't go very far and um, it's just a good spot. It seems to be pretty quiet here. And uh, um, the bike did really good. It's a 2017 uh, KTM 350. It was a nice ride out here other than my luggage issues and the GoPro coming off the helmet. But uh, like I said, at least I didn't lose the GoPro. I would have been really upset about that. <laughs> but, um, and tomorrow I think I'll just do a better job of uh, loading up all my stuff. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm also checking to see how much fuel I'm going to burn on this trip. So I haven't checked my mileage yet. I was kind of curious and I forgot to look. But um, it doesn't really matter. I want to know what the total is, not, not what it took to get me here. So I think I'll make it back. I have a quart. Of gasoline that I can put in there uh, I put the bigger tank on there 4.3 and it seems to go go real well you know it carries the fuel real low so you don't really notice it and uh, the bike does well but man with all that camping gear on there you can really tell a difference in the way the bike handles and there, there's nowhere to move you, you you can't move on the bike so when you get in the sand it gets really hard to uh, control um, I need to be able to put the stuff further back, but then it gets in the way of the exhaust. So, I'm not really sure how I'm going to deal with that. But, like everything else in life, it's, it's kind of a trial and error. And, uh, I made some mistakes, but I got everything here. <laughs> so, it's not that bad. So, so we'll see how it goes. But um, that's pretty much it, and I'll uh, check back in in the morning. We'll see what's going on then.
so it's about 7:45, and uh, I just had a little bit of breakfast. And slept okay last night. <laughs> Certainly slept better. Um, definitely need to get a mattress pad of some sort. That'd be really nice. I'm too old to lay on the ground anymore. Every little rock hurts. But um, overall, it was pretty good. It was quiet. Didn't even hear any coyotes last night, which was surprising. I expected to hear some coyotes sniffing around. Didn't get any of that either. Um, could hear people off-roading way off in the distance. And I'm guessing it was some fireworks or something. I'd get a big boom every now and then. But didn't get cold. Um, it's a good decision not to use the rain fly. Got to look up at the stars all night. Huh. All night. Um, I probably woke up every 20, 30 minutes just because a rock was poking me in the back or something. I tend to sleep on my side. And that's awfully hard to do out here. So, but all in all, I slept okay. It wasn't a bad experience. <clears throat> I didn't stake down the tent. Really didn't need to. But what I didn't think about was the breeze blowing and making the tent rustle and make noise. I never knew if it was a coyote sniffing around. So I'd have to roll over to check. They're not going to hurt anything, but... I've had them steal my cooking utensils before. <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It didn't get that cold. I, the weather report said I was supposed to get 55 out here. I'd say that's probably what it was. Um, I, there's no internet, no cell service, no nothing out here. Too far away. But um, it occurred to me that I hadn't really given you a rundown of the area that I'm in. So the camera will be a little shaky, but I'll show you where we're at. So this is where I camp. It's a nice area. There's nothing around here. Nobody around here. This is one trail. I don't know, it doesn't have a name, as far as I know. But it runs along the border of the, the uh, uh, Octia Wells. <clears throat> and if I go out here, you can see a sign. And that's pretty much the end of the trail, unless you're highway legal. Um, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There is a sign over there. So... If you're not highway legal, you can't go beyond that. And it's kind of weird because <clears throat> technically once you go into Anza, you have to stay on trails, designated trails. But they're not saying that you can't go on that trail. They're saying you have to be highway legal to continue on that trail. And I found this trail years and years ago. <clears throat> I'm talking 25 years ago. From the other side which is uh, Thule Wash, and uh, this is where it comes out. But back then they didn't have signs, but now they have signs on the other side saying no vehicles permitted. But if you come in from this side, you can go in it if you're highway legal. <clears throat> but on the other side, it says that no vehicles allowed, which is weird because it's a slot canyon and there's no way there aren't any other routes so once you go that way you're done <laughs> so you'd have to turn around but of course you're not going to know that until you come to the back of the sign so i guess it's one of those catch 22s but uh it's a slot canyon it's real narrow and it changes all the time because the water runs through it i haven't been through it in a long time and i would rather have somebody with me if i was going to go through it so we'll see 
But um, this is pretty much it. This is the camp area. Um, back over here is uh, a wash. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I could see it from here here or not. I'm not sure how far I rode in. I was pretty tired when I got in last night. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't even that late. I think it was uh, probably 5.30 by the time I got to camp. I mean, you can see this trail used to be used a lot, but it looks like maybe one or two people have been on it since then. It looks like somebody in a razor or something come, came through here. But, yeah, the wash is right over there. And uh, um, this is pretty much it. All that over there is Anza Borrego. And uh, maybe next time I'll camp out in there. Can't have a fire, but you know, you can't have everything. So anyway, so hopefully I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to rig the GoPro up on the uh, bike somehow, and at least get some footage of the way back um, after I figure out a better way to secure my uh, bags. I hope I don't want to have to wrestle with those all the way back either again. I kind of prolonged my trip coming out and frustrations. Um, but so far, the, the overnight camp trip was good. Um, I would do it again. I just don't know if I want to ride the bike 100 miles each way on pavement to get to where I'm going. I'm thinking I might want to truck the bike here and then go out. It just kind of seems silly to, to truck the bike and go camping off the bike. So, but I think it would have been a more enjoyable experience if I had. The only thing that concerns me is leaving my truck out there in the middle of nowhere. Um, I can leave it at the ranger station. They said that's probably the best place to do it. Um, of course, no one's going to guarantee that your truck's going to be okay. And uh, there's a lot of stupid people out there. So... So we'll see, we'll see one of, one of these days. Um, Cause I'd like to come out here and have the ability to go much further. The problem is that there's, there's no gas here at Ocotillo Wells. You have to go all the way out to the 86, which is at least another half hour east of here. Um, I'm guessing considerably more. Or you go into Brago Springs and it's pretty much the same, same story there. Um, so, as far as coming out here and exploring on just your bike all the way from wherever you live it's probably not real achievable um, without going way out of your way to get gas unless somewhere in that route uh, salt and seas over there off the 86 and uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff to go see out there and i'm hoping to he head out there one of these days and, and check that out so we'll see but I'll get back to you uh, once I get everything loaded up and we'll go from there. All right, well, we're headed out. We'll see how this goes. I got the uh, luggage tied down a little differently. So hopefully it'll stay put. It's a long ride. I'm gonna take my time getting out of here so I don't bounce everything around and loosen everything up again and uh, hopefully everything goes okay just got to find a way into the wash here so hopefully this angle is okay I uh, lost the sticky mount from my helmet so I've Got it zip tied to the brake reservoir right now. And I'm really hoping it'll stay there. But at least if it falls, I'll know it. So it's gonna be a long, slow ride out of here. Just because I don't want to deal with having to tie all this stuff down again. So we'll see how it goes. I don't even know if this footage will work. The angle on the camera is a little off to the right. But 
it's the best I could do. May not be able to use it. Oh. It's good to be back on the bike. I haven't been on the bike in close to a month, other than one ride. Uh, I crashed and hurt my ribs, banged up my elbow. I'm a little disappointed how long it takes to recover from that stuff now. Um, it's been about six weeks now and the rib still hurts, but not as bad as the bill from emergency, which I really didn't need, $1,400, went to urgent care, because I didn't think it was an emergency, but they wouldn't see me there, thank you Kaiser, and uh, said I might have internal bleeding, so, so I waited eight hours in emergency for them to take two x-rays and give me some pain pills and send me home. But uh, Kaiser wouldn't do that. They have an x-ray machine there, but they were concerned about the internal bleeding. Of course, the accident happened. Well, by the time I got the x-ray, like, like 20 hours earlier, but uh, I got there to urgent care 14 hours after the accident. And uh, yeah, I just really don't think it was something that emergency needed to deal with. So, but we don't always get to make those decisions. That's what the doctors are for, I guess. So, the rest of this is pretty much dirt road to get out of here. So I'm going to turn the camera off for now. Later on when I hit the slab, I'll turn it back on. Hopefully this is recording, I can't see it to even tell. Um, this is the sad fact of uh, coming out and doing these kind of videos on the weekend, especially on uh, one of the biggest weekends, which is Halloween weekend, uh, pretty much an opening weekend for desert season over here. There's a few people that go before that, but usually it's too hot, but it's been pretty nice lately. Um, I think today the high was 81, or going to be 81, and this is going to be a very slow ride through here. Um, this, this section, we, it's called the Narrows, and uh, it's called the Narrows for a reason. <laughs> it can be pretty tight for a RV, someone's not too familiar with their rig, so you just got to be patient, it's all part of the game. But it's a nice canyon. And I believe that's San Felipe Wash that's down below us, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, this comes out by an area called Scissors Crossing where uh, S2 and the 78 meet. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little ride through here. This little canyon is not too long though. Maybe three, four miles. But unfortunately, it's going to take a little bit while to uh, get through that, given the circumstances. The camera angle is actually pretty good for this place. So, otherwise, I'd be staring at the back of that white Dodge. temperature really drops down through here too. I took the liners out of my riding suit. 
it was uh, a little hot coming out here. But I think this will be perfect for the ride out back home. Feels pretty good. And it'll be warming up as we head out. So especially after we got out of the canyon. So after we got in the canyon, uh, there's usually a place for people to pull over. They don't always do. But hopefully they will. Gotta be patient. You never know if uh, this is the first time out with that truck and trailer. It's a pretty big motorhome. Or maybe he got hurt and someone else is driving that's never driven it before. And if you pass him, there's gonna be another guy just like him. <laughs> not too far down the road. It just doesn't make sense. It's not worth it. Sometimes you get rocks falling off this edge. It's a bad place to uh, come around the corner and hit a softball sized rock and put a bike down real quick. Coming up on S2 now. But we'll see if this guy goes straight or if he pulls over. I'm not in a big hurry, but KTMs aren't known for their soft seats, and I still have the stock seat on this thing. And two and a half hours in the saddle is little butt numbing. Oh, looks like he's turning. Let's see if he pulls over. A lot of people turn here. If you go straight, it takes you into Julian. And it doesn't look like he pulled over. Let's see, there's still room for him to pull over up here. Nope. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, hope you like it. Uh, Click the like, and if you don't, I guess click the don't like, leave a comment, I don't read them. <laughs> Too many people have 
mean things to say and don't even understand how difficult it is to do a stupid vlog like this. So, alright. You guys ride safe.